So all of us at Princeton University and the Institute for Advanced Study are very honored to host this conference, Strings 2014, and pleased that so many of you have come. I want to thank all of you from near and far who have come to contribute to the conference and also for all the work you do throughout the year that makes our field the exciting thing it is. The reason we're meeting in this historic hall of Alexander Hall and not uh, at the Institute or in the Physics Department of Princeton is that actually this is the only facility on campus or at the Institute that's large enough for this gathering. Since we will spend a few weeks here, I thought I'd begin by making a few remarks about the hall that we'll be meeting in. Alexander Hall was built in the 1890s to fill the perceived need for a venue for large gatherings of the whole college student body and faculty, such as commencement. You might be a little surprised that the student body of Princeton in the 1890s could fit in this hall, but actually in the 1890s, this institution was still called the College of New Jersey, and it was what we would now call a small college with 600 students and 37 faculty. In other words, the student body was roughly the size of this strings gathering, and the faculty was roughly the size of the current physics department. <clears throat> the east side of the building, you can uh, see depicted some of the great scientists and mathematicians of the past. In those days, what's now Princeton University was still called the College of New Jersey, and there was an intense debate in the 1890s over whether it should remain a small college or should transform itself into a university. Uh, it, at least in part, this debate was settled right here in this hall on October the 22nd, 1896, during the 150th anniversary celebration of the college, when President Patton formally proclaimed that what heretofore for 150 years has been known as the College of New Jersey shall in all future time be known as Princeton University. But actually, that didn't completely settle the debate. And later on, Woodrow Wilson, before becoming president of the US, was president of what was then Princeton University and was one of the ones who advocated transforming it into a great research university. In 1980, this hall was remodeled as a concert hall, and in 1996, it appeared on the US postal stamp commemorating the 250th anniversary of Princeton University. It's still used for many university ceremonies. But now let's go back to our strings meeting. For over a quarter century, the strings meeting, the annual strings meeting, has been an important focal point for work in our subject. We'll follow this tradition here at Strings 2014, aiming for a unified presentation of the many themes of modern string theory. The plenary talks will aim to give an up-to-date overview of many areas of current research. In addition to the plenary talks, the conference has three other components that I urge you to take advantage of. The gong show, which will occur on Thursday afternoon, has been an important part in recent strings meetings. I think it was introduced in Sweden a couple years ago. It's one of the most exciting parts of the program because it gives us the chance to hear a lot of new ideas in a short time. There was a very successful gong show last week at the Summer School of Prospects in Theoretical Physics at the Institute for Advanced Study, and you can see the list of speakers on the Strings 2014 website. I also recommend the poster session this evening during the welcome reception that will be in Brush Gallery of the Physics Department. The welcome reception is not just for food and socializing, but gives us the chance to meet some of the researchers presenting the posters and to learn something about their work. There will be 60 posters on many interesting topics in string theory. And finally, on Wednesday afternoon, you're all invited to the Institute for Advanced Study, where there will be parallel sessions that will give us the chance to go into greater depth on many exciting topics. Nearly half of you were at the Institute last week for the summer school. I hope this week will go as smoothly as things did last week at the Institute. <clears throat> Institute Director Robert Dykraff is responsible for the artwork, which among other things you can find on the t-shirt, which I strongly recommend as a bargain. <laughs> we also acknowledge support from the National Science Foundation, the Department of Energy, and the Clay Mathematics Institute. Hopefully with all the presentations we'll have, we'll gain a broad view this week of what's going on in our field. Let me thank you all of you again for the contributions you've made in making the field what it is, for coming and for helping to make the field so rich and vital. I hope it will be a fruitful and productive week for all of us. Thank you.